1940s this was Oria Wickenby, about 10 miles west of Lincoln, constructed in 1942 to an A-class airfield and used by number one group bomber command. Most of the airfield has been returned back to farmland but about 30% is still used for private aircraft operated by Lincoln Aviation Limited on a cross section of hard runway. Two of the three hangars built in the 1940s are still in use, a B1 and a T2 type. Other buildings are on private land and not accessible. No. There are still remains of the runway. Wickenby has a small museum situated in the watchtower, but due to Covid regulation it's not been opened since November 2020. I was informed this by a gentleman who worked nearby. On the entrance to the airfield, a memorial to the 1,080 aircrew who lost their lives from RAF Wickenby. Two squadrons made RAF Wickenby their home base till the end of the war. Number 12B Squadron and 626 Squadron. Number 12B Squadron arrived with Vicar Wellingtons and converted to Lancasters. 626 Squadron arrived with the Lancasters. Number 12B Squadron, while operating Wellingtons, lost 59 aircraft. Not sure how many were lost when stationed at Wickenby. On the night of May the 3rd and 4th, 1944, Lancasters from RAF Wickenby. 12B Squadron and 626 Squadron took part on a raid on a German camp situated in France. Delays caused by issue with radio communication led to the last 42 Lancaster, 7 from RF Wickenby, 3 from 626 Squadron and 4 from 12B Squadron. Losses from RAF Wickenby during World War II. 626 Squadron, 49 Lancasters on operation, plus 11 destroyed on non-operational crashes. 12B Squadron, 111 Lancasters lost. A total of 171 Lancasters lost from RAF Wickenby. 1,080 aircrew killed in action. This is the 7th RAF airfield visited this year and a total of 937 Lancasters lost. It's May the 17th, the first time we've been allowed back in the hangar due to Covid regulations since November 2020. First person I met was Spen and he explained to me a few things I got wrong on the last video to do with the auxiliary power supply so, for the Lancaster. Uh, You've got four, four six volts. Four six four, volts? Six, these, these are all six volt. Oh, are they? I thought they were 12. No, so you've got, get that one, one, two, three, four. So they're in series to give you to give you the 24. Yeah. I don't think for the, for the amount of power they need, I don't think they could get a couple of 12 volts to do. I mean, even on, um, I think the BBMF Lancaster uses a bank of six, of six volt batteries. Oh, does it really? Yeah. Heavy six volts, aren't they? They're fairly large. These, um, they, I think they've had these a while, but they, they do charge up well. Right. So, so uh, I charge them up every couple of months. Yeah. And, uh, I did say, I don't know whether I was right, on the plug. Ah, yes, the plug up. I saw uh, that. So what we and I just wondered whether yeah. it was just to take the static electricity. No, what it is, you've got your negative and your positive, and yeah. that is an interlock. So that pin is shorter than these two. So if this isn't in properly, it won't. You you, you can't get electricity on onto the aircraft. Uh, yeah, it's an interlock to make sure that this is actually fitted tight in the socket. Yeah. If you look at the current. Um, here, right, you're talking, you start off 150 and they can actually almost 
almost go up to 400 amps. Now I would think, because these engines were in quite good condition, that, that they wouldn't. I mean, maybe the initial surge, surge yeah. to get everything moving would be quite high, but then it, of course it would drop back down. Yeah. And this is the sort we, we use. Yeah. Uh, so you've got a spline shaft goes in goes into the starter mechanism in the engine. Yeah. And there's possibly um, a one-way clutch or something. I don't know. You, uh, Brad would if you have a word with Brad. Yeah. Right. So this we, is under the uh, port. This is under the port wheel wheel um, in the port wheel bay. Yeah. Um, so as you can see, the standard NATO socket, three pins, uh, 24, 28 volts. Um, in this aircraft, of course, it's 24. You've got the two big pins, which is the plus and minus 24. And the little pin off to one side is your interlock that we were talking about on the trolley act. That's the one I call the earth. That's right. Yeah. So you can see that uh, if your plug's not all the way in, then the power doesn't connect. Yeah. Uh, and they are a very tight fit in there. Yeah. Uh, like I say, it's a standard... Because it's very heavy cable it for is. Um, well, pulling it, down on you, it. You yeah. think of the current you pull in. Yeah. And on this, um, on this aircraft, uh, you're not really in real terms pulling a lot of current out of it as you would be, say, you know, if you were powering up a V-bomb or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Because of course they standard NATO sockets, so they all use the same. Yeah. And this is a NATO this, this side. Is, this is a NATO this side. Yeah. And we'll pop up the other side. We'll have a look at the other one. Yeah. Right. Good. So there's the other socket. Um, circular one. The circular one. Yeah. And um, this is Ministry of Defence. This, this is a this Air is Ministry. A, yeah, this is an Air Ministry one. So this is uh, this is sort of standard uh, World yeah. War Two. Yeah. So why have you got the NATO coupling on your um, power supply? Because they're easy to come by. Oh. It's it's a more efficient system and it's easy to get in and out. Right. And this is the st underneath the starboard. This is underneath the starboard. Yeah, this is a starboard wheel bay. Yeah. And there, of course, you can see uh, Jervis has got the airline plugged in because he's uh, he's charging up the uh, the compressed air system. And over there, you've got your you, you you've got the over there you've got the uh, uh, little round knob. There is is your primer pump. So that's the tap for the. Underneath that nameplate for yeah. number three. That'll be, be number three and, and number, I would four number four. Is in where number one, uh, one is on the other side above the black box. That's it, yeah, yeah. And I can't see the pump. Oh, I uh, can the now, pump, yeah. The pump is the is yeah. that uh, little round handle there. Yeah, I've got it. Knob. Yeah. Right, so as you can see, you look on down on it. Okay. I could see the pin. Yeah. Long way with it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So the air ministry one is somewhat different. Both the pins are a different thickness that stops you getting the orientation wrong. Yeah. So it's just a case of push it in. You've got power. Take it out. You've not. Right. And it, once again, it is just a um, um, a friction which holds it. Oh yes. Yes. Yeah. Just. A, but this. Um, oh, this kind of spring loaded. Yeah, I th I th no, no, no. You've just got sort of a standard sort of split down the pin. Yeah. So the big one is the positive, and the smaller one is the negative. Yeah. Okay. Yes, good. So of course this is the this is the mosquito. And it's, uh, Morning, John. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that's good. That's They've got the um, training edge, and they'll soon be working on that now. And that's the jig for the fuselage for next November. You can see the axe mark in it. Put the axe through it. Yeah. At some stage on the line, so yeah. That fits, on, that fits underneath the new one you put yeah, on. That goes in there, so I made a new one of those because that yeah. too so far gone. Where about did the patch come? The patch was there, wasn't it? Yeah. So it just came. Oh yeah. yeah. 
So we had something at the back to uh, yeah. to rivet it to without putting another yeah. piece in. Yeah. If that's just a normal skin repair, then you'd have a, a piece done along the outside that rivets on the outside and, and the patch rivets really on the inside. Yeah. It's a proper dead repair. Is this the original steel or one from the yeah. Lancaster? Yeah, yeah. We, have, we have to take a hammer to it to, uh, yeah, to put, put it back into uh, shape. shape. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's... yeah, but a sudden impact, yeah. a shock. Yeah, but on, on, on the wing itself, just about here, there's, there's a balloon cable cutter. There's a what, sorry? There's a balloon cable cutter, it's about there on the leading edge of the wing. Oh, is there? Not, not far from that. Oh. Yeah. I've never seen them. No, you just, you just see the little square patch on these. Yeah. And they just cover, covers over where they're supposed to be. Yeah. Oh. And what about the trailing edge? Have you decided how you're going to dimple the rivets at the other side or aren't you going to bother? They'll just be squared off, I think. Be, yeah. yeah, just because as you... We've got two different sizes. Just... I've got one I've got, I've got a lot of... Oh, you have, yeah. Is that because you've had to over drill them? Um, or is it because they were over drilled? They, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, they were over drilled. Yeah. yeah, here they're still contouring you with eggs, aren't they? they oh, yeah, go up to a bigger yeah. one. Yeah, because when, when they drilled out, it wasn't drilled out all that carefully, basically. Yeah, and the holes were too big for one eggs, and even, even for Five thirty seconds. It was still rattling in the eye, so yeah. I can go up to three sixteenths. Yeah. Oh, it's coming on then. It's nearly there. Yeah. And you'll be putting it on the Lancaster when you've got it complete, will you? That's the idea. Yeah. Oh. I hope, hope you all the stud holes will fit. Yeah, line them up. Yeah. It should be all right because of, there's no distortion on the. Uh, on, on, on the web yeah. on that frame yeah. on, on that yeah. you know the new two new the, the original Lancaster wing tips